In honor of Black History Month, we bring you a new segment that highlights important figures throughout the civil rights movement and all of American history. This is the Civil Rights Spotlight. With back to school, still somewhat in the minds of us students here at Murray State, who better to start off the series other than civil rights activist Ruby Bridges, the first African American to integrate a public school in the South. Bridges was born three months after the Brown versus Board of Education decision on September 8, 1954. She started kindergarten in 1959 at a segregated school in New Orleans, Louisiana, until she became one of six black children to pass a test that determined whether or not they got to attend William France Elementary, an all-white school at the time. Bridges' father was hesitant in the beginning, but after some convincing from her mom, they both decided this was a necessary step, not only for their daughter's education, but for black people all around the nation. Monday, November 14, 1960, Ruby, along with her mother and four U.S. federal marshals, entered William France Elementary School. Due to the protests and threats made by segregationists, Ruby spent her entire first day in the principal's office. And later on, only one teacher agreed to teach her anything, and that teacher was Barbara Henry. Henry was Ruby's sole teacher throughout that, throughout that entire first year. Even with all the chaos around Ruby integrating the school, she never showed any signs of fear, as former Deputy Marshal Charles Burks was once quoted saying, she never cried, she didn't whimper, she just marched along like a little soldier, and we're all very proud of her. But beyond the hatred, there were many people willing to help out Bridges and her family. After Ruby's father lost his original job by deciding to let her integrate, a neighbor offered him a new one. Other locals volunteered to babysit for Ruby's mom and act as protectors of her family. Ruby is remembered mainly for her and her family's contributions to the advancement of black people in the United States by integrating an all-white school, but her story was also represented in Norman Rockwell's 1964 painting, The Problem We All Live With. Throughout the rest of Ruby's education, more African-American kids were enrolled, and by the time she graduated high school, all classes were fully integrated. Ruby Bridges is a perfect example of how that problem we all live with is still alive and well, as she is currently 66 years old, going on 67. Ruby is still very much involved with racial equality as the chair of the Ruby Bridges Foundation, which she founded in 1999 to promote the values of tolerance, respect, and appreciation of all differences. This has been a Civil Rights Spotlight. Stay tuned for more MSU Tonight after the break.